This is Jeanette Hall, and these... I think we should just make a bigger section and give us time to get set up first. ...are Jeanette's electric fences. They're used more for people to keep the crowds back. She doesn't plan to turn the fences on, mind you, but she is going to war. So, so this is this is for real. You've got yeah, a truck full of almost 400 goats. And how hungry are they right now? They're super hungry. They're like really ready to get to work. Yeah. <laughs> they may not look the part, but think of these goats as an army, one that marches on its stomach. And in a place like this, that is a very useful thing. That's everybody. This is Rundle Park. It's a dump, literally, built on a garbage dump. That's why it's so hilly. But it's what's above ground that's become a problem. You see, the park's been invaded by yellow toad flax, Canadian thistle, common tansy, and don't even get Jeanette started on leafy spurge. Once you crack that open, see that milky sap that just came out yeah, there? Yeah. So that is actually an irritant to skim. These noxious weeds are everywhere, and they're choking out the natural plant life. They're toxic to most animals, too. The city's tried pulling them out by hand, but that's too labor-intensive. And using an herbicide that literally poisons the park. And besides, the weeds here have actually become resistant. Though Rundle Park ha had a history of being sprayed with herbicide, our leafy storage populations were still uh, abundant and high. So bring in the city's goat coordinator. That's an unusual job description. Yes, I agree. <laughs> Joy Lacan oversees the program that's paying Jeanette's goat company close to $100,000 for three seasons of work over three years. It's a pilot project to see if goats are an effective way to control weeds long term. So this is a good thing that you can only find one of these. In yeah, so when we first arrived to this park, this park was yellow because it was just covered in this flower. But here's the thing about weeds. They don't tend to stay down for very long. Doesn't it just grow back after the, the goats eat it? Yeah, we want to actually see it come back in with a vengeance. That means we've stressed it, so it's trying really hard to reproduce. And the more it does that, the, the, the more I'm, starved out it gets. Yeah, it. I'm starving the root. I'm depleting the root, the sugar stores in the root base. Keep cutting them down before they have a chance to spread their seeds, and you can eventually beat them. But it's a long game because each weed has its own unique life cycle. They're all different. I'm watching the group at the top. I don't want them touching those saplings that were newly planted. So I'll give them a command if, get back, lie down. The goats are actually trained to prefer specific weeds. It's done right from birth, the same way you'd train any animal, really. Repetition and positive reinforcement. They're like dogs that way. Hey, sweetie. I listen to the way you, you talk to the goats. <laughs> it almost sounds like you're ushering toddlers around. It is, it feels, I always say, like it feels like I have 100 toddlers. <laughs> Good boy, that'll do. Day one is a long day, but by the end of it, Canadian thistle is on the retreat, the goats are back in their pen, and Leafy Spurge is next on the hit list. So we're on day two of us kind of visiting you and the operation. How was your night last night? Uh, our night was great. We're sleeping here in the snow with the goats and minus three wasn't that bad. And we're ready to get working. This is a 24 hour a day job. Protecting the herd is a big reason why. Goats have all sorts of natural predators, but fortunately Jeanette has a big team. Several goat herders actually, they often work in pairs. This is Dan Vandenberg. He was helping earlier with the electric fencing. <laughs> He and Jeanette will be on the move for about six hours straight today. Hey Jeanette, is everything okay up there? But early on, there's already a problem. The goats are getting separated. Dan's goats in front, moving too quickly. They kind of follow each other like ants. Like they have to see their, their person in front of them. Come on! There's stragglers on the road. They're trying to get them all down there, but it's not easy. Come by, they're all feeling my frustration with my husband today. <laughs> oh, did I mention Jeanette and Dan are married? Ten goats on their own is one thing, but when it's one lonely goat on their own, they get upset and they're much harder to herd. There is another benefit to the work being done here, one that doesn't actually involve weeds at all. I would say about 20% of the calls I'm getting are people who are concerned about a fuel load around their buildings or businesses. Fuel for fire. Well, the goats especially, you know, they can clear up to six feet. So when they go through and they eat all the dry, dead litter that's on the ground, the goats can come and help clear that away so that we don't have 
fire jumping from the ground to the crown, so the, up the trees. By the end of the week, Jeanette's goats will have cleared out huge swaths of this park. And the whole way, Jeanette's work is being closely monitored by a nearby agricultural college. Everyone seems to agree they can already see a difference, but the city wants to know if the science backs that up. The program wraps next year. Only then will they know if these goats have these weeds on the run. But most people will never even know they were here. <laughs>